Fox Inking Media, powered by BYD. Mr. Spencer Fearon, it's a beautiful, warm day. Uh, it's Friday. Um, plenty to talk about. Um, yeah, there is plenty to talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? But before before anything, I know you saw, um, may I say a massive thank you um, to Al Medina 313 and a massive thank you to Panda's Restaurant uh, for preparing some excellent meals that I did for the elderly at one housing in Tottenham. So it was, it was, yeah, it was really nice. But when, I mean, when, um, when was that? Pardon me? When, when was that? Recently? It was just, I'm, I've done it two days ago. So oh. yeah, it was, it was really, it was really cool. So I mean, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to the 313 for all of their support and help. Because all it is is a phone call to my brother, Ansa. And he'll say, right, don't worry, Spence. Just get the receipts and we'll take care of it. So I'm grateful to him. Good stuff. Feed, feeding the poor as always, Spence. That's, it's good, man. And what are they yeah, but this is not the poor. This is actually the elderly. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the elderly. Um, and I would say to anybody, if you've got a little time out, um, it's nothing for you to go visit um, a senior citizen's home. Yeah, like they've got housing because they're so grateful for the company. And not only that, you can learn a thing or two because they can talk history. So for me, it's really cool because I can all speak about old fights and they're all up to date. They can tell you about it. So, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really grateful for that. You know what I mean? Because happiness is not complete unless you share it. So, yeah. Great saying. Uh, let's jump on. Uh, someone who's very happy this morning because he's got his undefeated record back. Uh, Devin Haney is now 31 and 0 again. Um, just want to ask you initially, is it the right decision him getting his old back? Um, let's take out emotions from it, yeah? Um, do I think that Ryan Garcia deliberately cheated? I, as much as he behaves crazy and all the rest of it, I don't believe that Ryan Garcia deliberately cheated to have some advantage over Devin Haney. I think the advantage that he wanted was the weight and him paying disregards to that. But end of the day, it wasn't as far as I'm concerned. And and I know Devin, I know Bill really, really well, right? It wasn't the drugs that beat Devin Haney, right? It was the lack of a failed game plan that why he lost that fight. I'm not putting the drugs in consideration of anything, right? And the Austrian, which, which, which was found in him, was a smidgen. It wasn't a lot. And I think Amir Khan got, got uh, charged with the same thing, right? And, you know, like, you can shake somebody's hand and that can happen. You can, you know what I mean? So, and it's not me batting for, for Ryan Garcia. It's me just saying what it is. Um, obviously, Demi Haney is going to be happy that he's got his unbeaten record back, yeah? But let's be realistic. You got your unbeaten record, but everybody saw what happened. Similarly to, was it? It was, yeah, 2004, when James Tony beat John Ruiz, yeah? For the WBA Heavyweight Championship. And then, and James Tony's excellent boxer, right? We took him to school. Uh, but then there was some traces of uh, PED found in him. And then it got overturned. I think that, yeah, the fight was given a no contest, similar to this. But it doesn't matter, bro. We all saw what happened. So maybe you say, oh, I'm an undefeated fighter because someone cheated. I get it if we went to the extremities of cheating, right? And then also we've got to take into consideration that we believe that the person deliberately cheated, right? I don't know Ryan Garcia to say he deliberately cheated or not. But what I can say is, like, I don't believe that the drugs helped him, if that is the key, the drugs helped him to win. But if it was anybody else, and there's, there's a substance that's been found, you know what I mean? He's been, he's been, he's been, he had to forfeit $1 million to Golden Boy. He's had to forfeit paying $10,000 to the New York State Athletic Commission. So, but the one, the one year ban isn't going to do no difference to him anyway, because he fights like once a year anyway. What, what about the, uh, let's just talk hypothetically. What if David Haney won? Would the fight still be a no contest? Mm, no, it wouldn't be. So he only favors the person who, who lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because you're saying that you were aided with a performance enhancement drug to secure victory and you were aided by something that's on our banned substance list and so if that happens then you're you don't get yeah so that's what happens it's one million to golden but what would you think that's for pardon me what this one million he's got to pay to golden he's like his promoter what why do you think yeah maybe there's some clause in the contract like if you mess up or anything you've got to forfeit a million or yeah so he's he's had to forfeit it but i'm just going to be completely honest a lot of people don't care simply because the general consensus because how Devin Haynes handled this whole affair. Um, seriously, he needs someone to sit. He needs a PR team around him, because well, well, you know when you say how he's handled it, what what he's like specifically you talking about? I don't. I don't think. I think he's 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 majorly harpered like on the sour grapes tip. Do you know what I mean that? Like for instance, if I was him, I would have said, "I oh, held my hands up and said, okay, then you got to win over me. I'm not going to put too much emphasis on the drugs." Right? You got to win over me. But let's do it again and make sure you're clean and I'll kick your ass. That's what he should have done. That's what he should have said. But he didn't. It was like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Similar to when um, Mayoga, um cheated against Koto and then Koto got time to, to, to reenact revenge and then everyone's like, go on, Koto, go give it to him. Right? So, yeah. Okay. The, the other aspect of this, which I find quite fascinating, is that the New York uh, Boxing Commission sorted this matter out within three, four months, if that. Conor Ben, he still sat around over two, is it two years? I'm, I think it's two years or maybe over two years. Um, what, What's the British Boxing Board doing? Like, why is it taking, uh, ultimately, a failed test is a failed test. Why are we still sat around waiting for him uh, to either be clear? You know, it's weird that you mentioned Conor Ben because... I did a post on my Instagram about the Devin Haney, um, Ryan Garcia episode, and he sent a message out to me. So he, he was kind of venting. I said, bro, were you coming at me like this? He said, no, I'm just venting, Spence. You know, I'm just venting. And I do. I feel there's parts of me that feel sorry for Conor Ben um, because I would just like to see the young man fight and i like to see this thing. And I've, I've said on many, on many occasions, do I believe that he's actually a cheat? No, I don't think he's a cheat, right? But what I do know, and let's not going to be real here, right? It's not my saying. I'm not saying this, right? But a lot of people are pointing the finger at Tony Sims's gym, right? And like, oh, Craig Gooch has left, right? They're looking, they're saying, uh, what's his name? Felix Cash. Um, Felix Cash left. And, you know, Joe Cordina was banging out guys and all of a sudden he's not banging out guys. I'm just I'm just gonna be real. It's not me pointing saying ah, oh, right? So then maybe there are some question marks to say like maybe something some 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 skullduggery was going on there. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just being real. I have to be real. Right? Because that's how people point. Oh there was something going on the side. You know it goes anything that happens, people will overread it to think. But I'm just saying that is what the general consensus is going on now. Say like there was called so so Dougie going on in that gym. Do I believe it was? No, I don't. Because I know Tony Sims is a stand-up person. But I'm just saying, that's what the general consensus is. Yeah, it's just, just like when... It's just like when... Wild, that when, is. when... When... Uh, he's a regular on, on, on your channel. Everybody points the finger at Dominic Ingle to say that Dominic Ingle's on some skull Dougie all the time. And that's because Dominic Ingle is some muscle man. Right? Right, remember when Billy Joel, when Billy, you know, I was dominating now. Dominic's actually about 64 50, now, right? 50, so I'm saying, 50, like, huh? 57. Uh, it looks like he's 64, right? So I'm trying to say to you, right? I'm joking, though. I'm just joking, just joking, bro. Right? Um, just like when things go pear shaped, we like to overly look and overly indulge in things. So, yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah, like you said, in it, uh, unless someone's actually been tested positive, it's unfair to kind of point fingers. But we live in a world of rumors and people suspecting, etc. So it is what it is. But uh, are, like, who are we to blame in that situation, though? It, what's the British Boxing Board doing? Because that's how I'm seeing it here now. It's been over two years. Why can't they? It seems like a clear cut. He's got his story. You've got your story. Why can't we just sit in the middle and either let him carry on boxing or punish him? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm I'm tired of, of talking about it because I know like many people think that Colin is guilty. 
many people think that Connor's guilty, right? I think there's more people that believe that he's guilty than I think that he's innocent, right? But I'm on the side of I believe that he's innocent simply because I know the you, and because I know the you, I think yeah. But if he, you get what I'm trying to say. But if he is guilty, then like I said, the book should be thrown at him. But they haven't come with no solid conclusions to Connor Ben. And because of that, it's it's kind of like it's all up in the air. So my heart does go out to Connor because I know he just wants to fight. I recently saw him at a, a, a GBM show, right? And we had a good chat there. And I said, well, what's, what's going on, man? And like, he was saying, your guess is as good as mine. I was just to see Connor Ben back. And I tell you the idol guy who I'd love to see Connor Ben fight. I'd love to see Connor Ben fight Adrian Broner. That's a good fight. I would love to see that fight, especially like. Adrian just lost his last fight. Like, Connor didn't look so impressive in his last fight. You know what I mean? Because he's got a lot. He's got a lot on his shoulders. I'd love to see that fight because there's still two big names. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm going to move on to Tyson Fury. He, he did his first interview uh, properly yesterday. And uh, I'll <laughs> who did he do that with? Uh, his own uh, channel. I think it's like the Furiosity Drink. Okay, okay. So I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. It's only about four minutes, but a couple of the things that he said, I was going to get your uh, opinion on him. Uh, basically saying that he's watched the fight back a few times. He thought he, he won. Um, he feels like he boxed Usyk's head off and he busted his nose in round eight. Um, and he, he basically said he gave Usyk four of the 12 rounds with a knockdown. He would have got five and he, he feels like he, he should have still won the fight. Um, did did you have it like? Did you give Usyk only four rounds? You know, I know you've already said. Um, but what, what do you think of them observations from him? No, you know what it is? Is this? It's like <clears throat> it's opinions, right? And he you also, know, we did also highlight that he was having too much fun. Um, and he feels like um, it, he was in there with the local amateur boxer and he was enjoying it too much, messing around, and then paid the price in round nine. That's his words. Um... Um, Tyson Fury is entitled to feel that way because in his head, it was a close fight in his head, right? But I'm saying to you this now, and to be realistic, historically, right? If a smaller man is backing up a bigger man, right? Who are you going to favour? Because you, in your mindset, you think the bigger man is actually going to be backing up the smaller man. Lloyd Hannigan always used to say to me as a kid, it's not whether you're big enough to fight at a weight class, it's whether you're good enough. Alexander Usyk proved to us, proved to the world, that he's actually good enough to fight against elite big men, right? you got to think about it. If you look on the body structure of Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua is a new age Ken Norton, how he's built. You know what I mean? You look on Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury is, is a skilled Primo Carnero, right? Of the 30s and 40s. Yeah, to young kids, Primo Carnero was an uh, Italian heavyweight champion, right? So you look at you look at Tyson Fury, our mindset cannot adjust to seeing a small man bully you, push you back. A small man, when you watch the fight correctly, who was setting up traps, constantly setting up traps. He was stabbing the body with his right hand jab, right? Deliberately so he could lower the guard so he could come over the top with that right hand. Sorry, with the left hand power shot, right? Hand. With the left hand power shot. He was doing that from round one. And I ain't gonna lie, round 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 five or round six, Tyson Fury was excellent. Excellent. And we're thinking, well, it's going to be a couple more rounds. He's going to stop Usyk, and Usyk was still there. Usyk was the one that sucked it up. So, but Tyson Fury's entitled to feel like, no, but I, I won that round. No, no, that round, no, I won that round as well. But, yeah, but, and like I'm saying, he's entitled to feel that way. But in my mind, and I have to be open and honest, I don't think that Tyson Fury won the fight, right? Doesn't mean that Tyson Fury's not a good fighter, right? I'm not relishing nobody else's demise. Um, but I do believe that Tyson Fury out for this fight, he's got to be very careful in a, in a rematch. And also, I want people to realise, I spoke to Spencer Brown in depth two days ago. He was at Ascot 
him and Michael Owen, the right escort, Alan Graham, he was on the phone. He was on the phone for a little while. And he said, listen, categorically, Tyson Fury is taking that rematch and it is signed for um, December 21st. So all these people turn around talking nonsense that Tyson Fury is not going to take the rematch. And Tyson Fury, it is signed, right? It is sealed, and hopefully on the 21st of December, it shall be delivered. So, Johnny Nelson, fingers on lips time. Uh, well, the, the other thing he said, he also touched on the, the, the drunken video. He confirmed that was him. Uh, he said, I got pissed up about two weeks ago and fell over on my face. Didn't do any damage. I'm still good looking. Uh, saying that he's had lots of messages, people asking if he's all right. And he said, you know, you're a grown man, you have a drunken night out, and all of a sudden people think you're going to jump in front of a train. Obviously, from my past history, but uh, people are concerned. But I've just been chilling out and spending time with my family. Which is what I think you kind of said that, you know, people need to back off. He's just... Uh, well, no, it's, listen, listen, this is what I'm trying, this is what I'm trying to say. Tyson is a human, right? <clears throat> and I'm saying, to be real, so what people are being too pernickety, you know what I mean? Because loads of footballers go on a lash and are drunk and legless and no one will say nothing, right? It's part of the culture, right? Um, there has been many fighters right throughout history who have been out on the lash, as they say. So what that Tyson Fury has been out on the lash? I'm saying he's allowed to let his hair down. What little he has left. So what? Does that take away from Tyson Fury being a, 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 a former heavyweight champion of the world? No, it doesn't. Does that take away from anything that he's done in the ring? No, it doesn't. It's just that he went on a, on a, on a drunken binge, right? So what? There, you know what I mean, I've seen there's, there's more things for me to be worried about than Tyson Fury, who just earned over 100 million, saying he's got out on a lash, right? Because let me put it to, let me just put it in, in another context. Today is today's um, Friday. I don't gamble, but just imagine I went to go and mark the lottery on the Euros and I won 100 million, right? And then someone saw me coming out of a nightclub drunk. People are going to say, you know what? But he just won 100 million. So what's the difference with Tyson Fury? Oh, but he's an athlete. But you're not taking into consideration. He's of the culture of being a traveller. Jermaine, so bloody what? So what? Right? Oh, you shouldn't be conducting yourself this way, or you shouldn't... Everyone who's saying all this kind of thing, like I'm saying, you know what I mean? Before you take the mud out of my eyes, take the beam that's in your own. And remember again, it says in Scripture that he without sin cast the first stone. Nobody can't. You can't, because nobody's not goody two shoes all the time. Nobody is. And so what? That that is that is actually pure facts there, Spencer. What what you just said there, and um, right. people are quickly uh, judging people on on mistakes, and uh, and we're only human. Uh, and then uh, the last thing I want to get you to do me some quick predictions for the boxing this weekend. And I know okay. you've done a lot of the boxes, but I'm just going to put you on the spot. Uh, one of the fights I'm looking forward to is Lewis Crocker and Conor Walker. Conor Walker, we've seen him upset, uh, you know, matchroom undefeated fighters uh, recently. Cyrus Patterson, a really good fight. And Lewis Crocker just brings pure violence. Um, what do you think? I got, I got, I got Crocker on a late stoppage. You know what I mean? I got, seriously, there's no disrespect to my guy still, but I've got Crocker late stoppage. How good is Crocker, do you think? Is the real deal? Um, you know what? Potentially he is he's a very good fighter. I like his style. Um, I do like his style. I like his all action style. I like his body attack. I like how he goes down to the body, comes through the middle with with, with the uppercuts, and he throws little short hooks. I, I, I mean, I think he's a very very good fighter. Very very nice, good fighter. He's a, he's a nice guy as well. I had a good chat with him yesterday. So uh, Tyler Denny, Felix Cash, Felix Cash coming after a long layoff. Tyler Denny's on the form of his life. I like Tyler Denny a lot, right? But Felix Cash is now training with Adam Booth as well. Yeah. I know Adam Booth. I've worked with Adam Booth. I know Adam Booth. Adam he hasn't, Booth. He hasn't fought for over two, is it two, is it 18 months? Yeah, I know, right? But the thing about it is this, the 
those kind of fighters, and he's very big for the weight as well, those kind of fighters, and like Tyler Denny, who's having, he's having an amazing time right now. I like Tyler, he's a very nice kid. Um, I believe, even though he's been out, and like I'm saying, Adam Bruce very meticulous. So I've got, uh, and I don't want to upset no, but I've got, I've got, because I know Tyler, I mean, but I'm going for Felix Cash. Um, I'm going, I'm going for, you know what? I'm going for Felix Cash, but if Felix Cash doesn't come out victorious in this fight, everyone's going to be pointing their finger at Tony Sims. I've said it. Yeah. Okay. Um, You've got uh, Lyndon Arthur over tonight uh, in Bolton. Uh, fight is coming back after the Bivol fight. Fighting Liam Cameron. Uh, Liam Cameron, who fans will know, is the guy that you know he took a four year ban for. I think it was cocaine. Um, you know he felt like they they dealt with him quite harshly. The British Boxing Board, but he's back. You know he's had a couple of good wins on GBM shows and a uh, big opportunity for him tonight. Really hungry. I spoke to him the other day. He like he's you know he. The way he spoke in the interview, he just kept saying, please, God, don't let me come this far and not let me win. That's one of the things he said that kind of stuck out to me. And Lyndon, for what I've seen, didn't make the weight yesterday. I don't know how much he missed it by, but he didn't make the weight. Well, he didn't make the weight. And also, Lyndon looked dead at the weight, right? Um, but Lyndon is a very, very clever operator. And he knows how to just keep on poking his jab out poking his jab out. And Linda's a guy who who fights with apprehension of fear. Like, if he's got fear in his belly for you, like, sometimes he can fight within himself and not expose everything that he's got. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Liam Cameron, so I don't even, I can't really make a, a sound um, um, decision on him. And that's the card, you know I mean, on this? I can't. So I can't say, oh, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. He's because 22 and 5. 22 and 5? Yep. I would say at these kind of level of fighters, then regardless that he's struggling at weight, um, what's happened now is that Lyndon Alpha realises that he's actually a world-class operator now. Um, so, yeah. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like the winner of that fight to fight Craig Richards. That's what I'd like to see happen. You know what I mean? Because... Um, I was having a good chat with Craig last week and I have to big him up. You know what I mean? I've got a lot of love in my heart for Craig Richards. You know what I mean? And I was thinking that Craig, because he's actually massive to move up in weight. And and Craig's like, he makes the weight really easy. Not relatively easy. I mean, really easy. Makes the weight. Right? He, he, he walks around a few pounds. He's like old school. He walks around like a few pounds over his fighting weight. So I'd like to see Lyndon Arthur, if he can be victorious, Lyndon Arthur and Craig Richards. Because since Craig lost in the 5v5, I don't want people to think, well, forget it. He's still a very, very good fighter. He's a damn good fighter. So, do you know what I mean? I would like to see, I'd like to see that fight made. Or furthermore, like Craig Richards going against the winner. Because I know like the, the Salons and, and Matron work together. So I'd like to see that fight. Uh, the last guy is obviously expected to win, but uh, you saw his debut, Hamza Udin, uh, young kid who Brother? was his dad. Um, looking forward but to that. Let me let me tell you this. Sam Jones manages him, right? Yeah. Right. And Slippery Sam phones me up and he says to me, "This is oh, it's a little while ago. It was last year." He said, "I've got this kid, Spence. Trust me, you. I know you will appreciate him. This Udon kid is fantastic. And you know the nicest thing that I like? I like the fact that his dad is his trainer. Right. I like that." I like the kid. I think the kid is very special. And when he's saying like, oh, I want to be the Tank Davis of the flyweight division, right? I don't think you need to compare. Listen, young man, just listen to me, right? Gray hairs carry wisdom, right? You don't need to be no one. You just need to be yourself because you are you are sunk. You are, trust me, you are something. Um, I think he is a really good addition to Matchroom. I think this kid um, could really bring a massive buzz to the flyweight division. I think he's a special talent. Good stuff. Spence, we'll leave it on that note. Um, yeah, thank you. Any final words if I let you fly out? No, nah, man, I'm good. I'm like, yeah, it's that time. I've got to run to the mosque now. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going off to the mosque. 
And then afterwards, I got some work to go and do. So it is what it is. But yeah, peace two fingers. And like, and BYD, I need to test drive one of your cars so I can do a review with Boxing King Media, right? I need to take one of your cars and drive it down South London. That's what, that's the move. Because Johnny Nelson has meaning to come down, right? But when Johnny comes, he likes to take the train. I'm saying, no, John, Johnny's sitting me like, no, Spence, the car's bad, you know? The car's bad. I'm like, bad meaning good. I'm saying, no, the car is a very, very good car. Yeah, you know I mean, it is crazy. It's like a go kart, probably best way I can describe it in a, in a nice way. But yeah, Spence, have a blessed Friday. Yeah, it's been a pleasure speaking to you as always, and we'll catch up uh, next week.